Hello, young scientists. I'm sure you're very well aware how important agriculture is in India. Well, agriculture is and has been for decades the major occupation of our country. It not only is the employer of a major chunk of the country's rural population, but it also is the food bank of our country, which feeds all of us. So in this video, I'll teach you about the various crops cultivated in our country in different seasons. Also, we will look at the various stages of farming, which once completed, brings the crops to the market for us to buy and consume. Welcome to the first segment on crop production and management. Now, food is one of the basic necessities of all living organisms. And as you already know, plants make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. Animals, including humans, cannot make their own food. They either prey upon other animals, and this group is called carnivores, or then there are humans who survive on animal products and meat of certain animals and birds. But why is food so essential for living organisms? Well, you're aware that the food we consume is broken down by metabolic processes and the energy released from food is utilized by organisms to carry out various bodily functions such as digestion, respiration and excretion. Man is at the top of the food pyramid and we get our food from plants or animals or both. And like I told you a while back, agriculture has been India's major occupation for several decades. It has fed this country with a population of billions. And since this large population needs food to live, food production has to happen on a large scale. And food distribution has to be managed properly. So let us understand how has man evolved, so did the agricultural practices. Well, until 10,000 BC, mankind was nomadic. People wandered in groups in search of food and shelter. They ate raw fruits and vegetables that were easily available on trees and developed some crude tools for hunting of animals for food. But then, man adopted the habit of eating plants. And for that, he started collecting seeds, which were randomly strewn over a patch of soil. These seeds germinated in whatever natural conditions were available and grew. But as the population grew, so did the demand for food. And thus, man learned to take care of his crops and cultivated them on a proper patch of land. And this was the beginning of agriculture. Agriculture or farming is the cultivation of crops and rearing of animals for food and other purposes. Now, each crop requires certain specific conditions which are most favorable for its growth. If you have ever seen fields, you will not see rice and wheat growing in the same patch of land. When plants of the same kind are grown and cultivated at one place on a large scale, it is called a field of that crop. For example, Wheat crop means that all the plants grown in a particular field are only wheat. Well, you must also be aware that crops are of different types. There are cereals, pulses, leafy vegetables, fruits and some other kinds. And all these different kinds are classified based on the season in which they are grown. India is a vast country of 29 states and 7 union territories. And the climate conditions like temperature, humidity and rainfall vary quite drastically from one region to another. And this diversity plays to our advantage. It helps us grow a rich variety of crops in different parts of the country. But crops that are grown across this vast land are majorly classified into two main categories. Kharif crops and Rabi crops. Now Kharif crops are the ones whose seeds are sown in the months of June and July and harvested in September or October every year. Paddy, maize, sugarcane, pulses and oil seeds all fall under this category. 
and rabi crops are known as winter crops and those whose seeds are sown around october or november are harvested in and around march april every year plants like wheat barley pea and mustard fall in this category other than these two main classes there is a small class of summer crops also known as zaib crops which are sown around march april and harvested just before the rainy season commences plants like gourd bitter gourd melons cucurbits fall under this category now in addition to all these there are shrubs and trees and these are cultivated in forests on orchards or on farms tea coffee mango plums roses apples are just some examples under this class now like i told you some time back each plant requires certain natural and man made conditions which would ensure an abundant yield why can't paddy be grown in the winter season well because the paddy crop requires a lot of water and rainy season is the most suitable for its cultivation india is a land of agriculture a big part of our population depends on this activity to earn their daily bread and butter and as you already know water is an important and integral requirement when it comes to cultivation of crops and farmers mainly depend on monsoons for this water but if the rainfall is less than adequate farmers are left in a dire state well should that be the case in this world of scientific and technological advancements there surely should be arrangements so that farmers are not left at the mercy of the rainy season well crop cultivation involves several activities that farmers undertake over a period of time the farming activity runs in stages you may find that these activities are similar to those carried out by gardener where the garden plants require constant care and attention for their healthy growth so let us look at all the steps that farmers have to execute for healthy crop production until they reach the markets where we buy them for consumption the first is preparation of soil followed by sowing of seeds then follows adding manure and fertilizers followed by crop irrigation and this is followed by protecting the crop from weeds which is followed by harvesting and lastly proper storage of crops so let us now look at what happens in each of these steps starting with preparation of soil now if someone has to build a beautiful tower however grand their vision without a solid foundation the tower is not going to stand for long is it good quality soil for crop cultivation is something similar to the solid foundation which plays a major role in giving a good harvest preparation of soil is the first step before growing a crop in this process the soil is plowed and loosened well one of the most important tasks in agriculture is to turn the soil and loosen it which is done by plowing the soil this helps in turning the top layer of the soil upside down and sometimes if manure is added to the soil before plowing loosening the soil will ensure that the manure is thoroughly mixed with the soil it also brings the nutrients in the lower layers of the soil to the top and this is important because these few centimeters of layers at the top actually play a major role in plant growth plowing also makes the soil more fertile as well as increases its capacity to retain water Moreover it helps in uprooting the weeds and exposes pests worms and insects which are eaten by birds what's more the loosened soil helps the earthworms and microbes present in the soil to play their part very well now you may already know that the earthworm is known as a friend of the farmer these organisms further turn and loosen the soil and add humus to it making it more fertile thus due to all these reasons turning and loosening of soil is very important for cultivation of crops now like i told you a while back this process of loosening and turning the soil is called tilting or plowing 
and an agricultural tool called the plow is used for this purpose. Plows are made of wood or iron. If the soil is extremely dry, plowing can be difficult and the soil may need some watering before plowing. Sometimes the plowed field may have big lumps of soil called crumbs. It is essential that these are broken down with the help of a harrow or a plank. Once the field is ploughed, it becomes uneven and must be levelled for sowing as well as for irrigation purposes. Levelling also ensures water seeps equally across the entire patch of land. A leveller is used for levelling the soil. Well, that was all about preparation of soil for all the steps that will now follow. But before we continue with the steps ahead, let us look at some useful agricultural tools that are used for loosening the soil. Okay, I think we have covered enough for one session and this would be a good juncture to take a break. But we are yet to complete a few more steps in order to reach the end of farming process. We will discuss them, but only in the next segment. So join me then. Tutomate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on Apple App Store or Google Play Store.